Today we're going to be installing a digital carbon fiber steering wheel in this C8 Corvette. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott and today we are going to be installing this beautiful carbon fiber with digital readout steering wheel in this new C8 Corvette. Now, um, I want to just go ahead and show you this and just before we get started, uh, what it looks like. When you open the box, you're going to get a steering wheel. It's completely finished. I mean, as far as like it has its leather, it has its stitching, as well as this nice, thick, really nice feel of carbon fiber. Um, and it also has the thumb inlays in carbon fiber here. So when you're holding the steering wheel like that, it just fits perfectly. And then it also has, I'm going to pull this protective film off so you can kind of see this, but it has a, let me pull this up, you can see that it has a digital readout right here. Now what this does is it shows the RPMs and it's all in dots. So it's like just your, you know, it's your shift points, just like a race car, okay? So this works uh, off of a Bluetooth system. The, steer, the system itself gets a, uh, some power from the, uh, the, the wheel assembly and then um, this sends down through Bluetooth to a controller that plugs into the ODB2 port. Um, it's a very, I'm not going to say a very simple install. It's an it's a easy install. It just takes a lot of, a lot of time to do it um, and just a lot of transferring things over. And as you notice, you can see this is just the skeleton here. So what we'll do is we're going to be taking the old steering wheel off and I'm going to show you how to do that and then we'll transfer the paddle shifters and all of the buttons and all that stuff. So everything that you have in here in this main part, this will all stay the same um, as your original steering wheel. Okay, so we're going to show you how all that's done. So uh, you might as well go ahead and sit back and we'll show you how it's done. What we're about to do is we've got to be able to, we've got to be able to take the steering wheel off. So we need to de-energize the airbag and so what we're going to do is a couple things I've done is I've opened the doors, I've taken off the roof of the car, and I've also adjusted the seat to exactly where I'm going to want to sit because when we're going to take the battery loose, nothing's going to work anymore. Um, so, but we have to do is we've got to pull all this stuff out to be able to get to the battery, which is right up here. Now, what you're looking at right at this thing, might as well show you to you. Uh, this is one of my creations. And um, might as well in the video, might as well show it to you. Um, you've probably seen some of the other some of the other uh, videos I've done on these trunk info, infotainment systems. This one does not have a screen in it. It just has uh, basically a glow plate underneath there that is backlit, just almost like a wind restrictor with the lighting in it. And uh, we do those also. So anyway, I uh, just wanted to show this to you, and uh, now we can, what we can do is we'll go ahead and we'll shut that off, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, okay, pull that out of here, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to unplug it from the car, okay. Set it off to the side here. And those of you that have never pulled one of these trims off, uh, it comes off in pieces and they just snap off. So you can just grab these on the edge and this snaps out, just like that. And you can put that down in the hole, get it out of the way. Then we can do the same thing over on this side. This is this trim that just kind of helps keep this all together. Then there's, you can reach right here with your hand, you can pop this up, there's another clip right there, and this lifts up like so, and then you can come over to this side, and if you have caps on here, this, these may get in the way, you can pull these, just set these off, that, okay, and we'll just pop this one free here too, just like that, okay, and this one will come up and off. Put this over to the side. Okay. Then at that point, we can leave this bottom one in place. But what that does is it reveals our battery. And so what we have to do now is we're going to take a, just take a little towel. 
Okay, just like this, really small. I'm gonna take my 10 millimeter socket and I'm gonna take and disconnect the battery here. Okay, just like that. And then we'll have this little guy up here. Because it's a tight squeeze up here where the battery actually goes and the where the connector is. So we wanna we wanna make sure that we don't have this come loose and reconnect up while the battery is uh, while the airbag and stuff is disconnected. So at this point we are ready to go ahead and we can do we can start to, to take everything apart. We're gonna wanna we're going to wait about 15 minutes. Um, so uh, let me see here. It'll probably look like my head's cut off, but what we're going to do here is we're going to wait about 15 minutes now, and then we'll come back, and then we'll start the uh, process of removing the old steering wheel. We are in the car now. We've waited our 15 minutes. We've disconnected the battery. We're good to go to start taking the steering wheel off. Now, you're going to need a few tools. Nothing major, but you're going to need a few. One is a, a little pick here to be able to reach in and be able to pull this panel door off the back here to get to the 10 millimeter bolt that's on both sides. So you've got two covers, one on each side, and then there'll be two 10 millimeter bolts um, that you're going to take free that will, is going to allow the, um, the airbag to come out. Okay, um, so here is the pick set that I got from Harbor Freight. I bought this a few years ago, and I use it on all the, the Corvettes all the time, but I also use it on other stuff too, but um, it comes in very handy. So if you don't already have one of these sets, go down and get one. Um, so then I'm going to use that one pick right here. Got my 10 millimeter right here. And then when we pull that out, it's going to show a, um, a 50 Torx that's right here. And I've got that on a breaker bar, you can see right here. Okay, as well as a ratchet so I can go ahead and once I get the, the bolt free, I can ratchet it out. Then we'll be able to take the, the, uh, the whole unit off, okay? So um, <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna reach in here, right, find that crack. Uh, there's a little crack on that compartment door. You can just reach in there and get it and then you can pull out and that will give you that little, that little uh, cover, okay? I'm just gonna set that in the seat and I'm going to do that same thing over on this side. They are identical, uh, the way they come out, the way they look. So it's not like, it's not that you're missing anything on the other side. You can see it's just the same. Okay. Okay. So now we got that. Now, hopefully you can see it right here, right here where my finger is. And I think that you can see that. Uh, yeah, I can see my finger in the camera. There's a 10 millimeter. Uh, bolt right there So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get our ratchet on that and then get that bolt out it's like so much easier than the previous model in the C7 you used to have to push in these little tabs and push the springs in to, to and you'd have to get them in just the right spot and it was a it was a pain I hated doing those but these are these are much easier to the right angle here so I can get that socket to take. There we go. You can see the airbag moving back and forth there now.
free. Let's see if we can get that to come out. Okay, we got it out. We'll go ahead and set that there. Now at this point, we'll be able to go ahead and pull the airbag. Now there is, there is, you can see right here, there's a couple different connector connectors right here. And um, this particular one, we, we should be able to use our little, our little pick again. But there's, um, on each side of the plug, okay, um, you're going to see that there is a little yellow, or I should say orange, little clips that lift upward, okay? They're, they're little locking locking pins, and I'm going to try to get on there, and then I'll, I'll show it to you um, from the, once we get them out, I'll show it to you on the camera here. But they just lift up. Now there was some in the other other airbags. There's other like little, little clips that pop up, but these these actually they're spring loaded. They do lift up, and sometimes what you might have to do is to go ahead um, and get two of these picks. Yeah, and that's what we're gonna have to do on this. So we're gonna take one of our other picks here. Okay. And we're going to lift both at the same time. Okay, so we'll get one there. And this, guys, is probably going to be the hardest part of taking the, changing the steering wheel. Okay, because they are spring-loaded. But other than that, this is pretty. This is a pretty simple install. And you just lift up and off like that. So let me see if I can show you this. Let me see if I can get the camera. I'm going to zoom the camera in a little bit here. So you can see that there's these. You can do it with, with the the, uh, cl the tip here. But you can see that that little guy, that just lifts up. You can see, can you see that? It's just moving upward. And you do that on both sides. And then it will free it. Okay. So when we go to put it back in, it's just going to snap in place. So super easy to put back. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay. So we're just going to lift that little guy up. And, and it doesn't take much. It's just you got to get it at the right angle with your clips. Okay. You can see that one just came free. Now these are color coded. So you don't have to mess with that. This one happens to be purple and pink. Um, and then there's also the actual airbag horn connection itself and that right there you can use your pick also it's just clipping so you're just gonna go in there like this and it'll pull out so there's your your little keeper that keeps that locked in place and then let's see We'll set that off to the side for a second. We should just be able to pinch this together right here. Pinch it together and it should come free. And it's stuck. All right, so we're going to get that to free up. see what they've done here so this clip is right here up at the top so you have to spread this little guy out just a little bit and then it'll come free so there is no press and hold there's this that little keeper and then there's this little guy okay so we're gonna set our little keeper over here with all of our other parts and we'll set our airbag over here also and get it out of the way 
And I'm going to zoom back out just a hair. There we go. All right, so now <clears throat> what that reveals is that there is a connector in here. And again, we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a second. But this is the, the power connector that goes into the steering wheel, into the column. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to... Um, and, and there's that, and then there's also the 50 millimeter or the 50, 50 Torx that we're going to take free. All right, so now what I've done is I've just turned the steering wheel here so you can see this the connector that takes all the connections and runs it down through the clock spring to be able to allow everything to, to work and turn in the steering wheel. But I, I want you to be able to see how this comes apart. You notice that all of this connection is all yellow. Right in the very bottom of that connection is a red little tab. Okay, that's your safety lock. So you're going to take your little pick like so, and you're going to go down to the very bottom of that tab, and you're going to lift up with it, okay? And it's going to lift the tab upward. Once you get that done like that, then what you can do is you can literally take your finger and press on the, plas the yellow plastic right below that tab, and it will now compress right where the red um, the little safety tab was allowing the plug to just disconnect from the steering wheel. So I'm just literally, let me see if I can do this. Um, see if I can get some, keep the light on that. And then I'm gonna try to push in this button with this finger and pull out with my, my hand here. So you guys can kind of see that. I know it's kind of, okay. Let's see. So if I push in and kind of wiggle and pull the wire, you can see that it comes right out and it leaves that black plug right there. So um, that is behind the steering wheel and this is how all the power and, and connections for all the buttons make it through the system. Now this is a cheater for you, just so you know. I'm gonna turn the steering wheel back, back around now. Um, there is on the the 50 millimeter, or I should keep calling it 50 millimeter, but the 50 Torx bolt here. Um, they've marked it where the bolt actually came to a stop, and that's a good guide for you to be able to know right where your, your nut needs to go back. So now what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our 50 Torx on here. Okay, and we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this in there like so. And this is one of the reasons that I've got the steering wheel pushed all the way toward me and I've got my seat pushed forward as much as I could do with that, or so I could get in and out of the car. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to apply some pressure here and we're going to try to hold the steering wheel to the best of my ability and, and see if we can get this bolt to come free. Now, sometimes these will not come free. If you start running into this issue, then go down. Um, I will put it on a, on the screen, but I keep in my shop. I keep extra ones of these bolts. They're not that expensive. They're only like six or eight dollars, but you want to make sure that you have one in the event that this torque. Because I'll show you when I get the bolt out. But the torque is very very shallow. It doesn't take this whole bit. Like it just barely takes any of it. And so they can strip out, and I and I had that happen a lot on the C the C7 series. They use the exact same bolt, so um, the C8s typically are not uh, not as hard. And we're going to find that out here in just a second. Um, but on the C7s, about one out of uh, I'm going to say probably three out of five, I would have to drill it out and then use an easy out to get this bolt out um, on the. Um, on the C8s, the ones I've done already, I've not had to do that. So hopefully this one doesn't make me a liar. So we're about to find out. Okay, here we go. All right. So if you can, ha if you have someone that can help you, great. Otherwise, what you do, and you're trying to hold your steering wheel, you try to keep that in place. And there you go. You can see it. Just that one broke free, just fine. Okay. If you have somebody to hold the steering wheel for you, it's a cakewalk. <laughs> it really is. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna switch over to the ratchet, so I don't have to sit there and do this uh, over and over. But what I found in the C7 class is that they um, 
they were really full of Loctite. And uh, it, you would have to take like a breaker bar and then put a big cheater bar on the end and and then have someone in here just push them to keep it in the socket because it, these, these bolts are so shallow. So, um, so I advise that if it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're doing a C7 or a C8, um, that you go ahead and uh, you have one of these bolts. And like I said, I'll go ahead and I'll put that information up on the screen because um, it will definitely save you a lot of headache later on uh, with this. But you can take a look at this. See how shallow? Let me see if I can get the, the, the bit here. Watch. Look how shallow that is. It just barely goes in. And so that's what's this is what you're taking loose and you just like I said just to be on the safe side you know if you're getting a lot of resistance on this and it starts popping uh, um, sometimes if they put too much in here you'll turn and you'll you know leverage it and it'll sound like it popped or that it like almost like something broke at that point you better make sure that you've got uh, you know you've got another bolt I've literally have in the past have broken these uh, these torque bits uh, right in the middle just, just break them right off so so there's a lot of torque going on here and not needed uh, when you go to put this back you'll see we snug them back up we're good it, it's not ever coming free I just don't understand why they did as much as much goop as they did on these okay all right so now at that point we've got our steering wheel we've got it we'll make sure we want to try to keep it as centered as possible there is a there's a cog in here, so it should the new steering wheel should fit right in the exact same spot, but I never trust that, okay? And so what I'm gonna do now is we should just be able to pull this right off, okay? So it should just slide right off of here. Okay, we might have to rock it back and forth just a hair, just like that. Okay. You see that this, this one's kind of stuck. So instead of hurting yourself, I'm glad this is doing this, this way you guys can see. But instead of hurting yourself, like you just yanking this thing and it come up and hit you in the face, take your bolt, and just screw it in just a little bit, okay? Just so this way you can like really reef it back and if it comes free, it, the bolt's gonna stop it. So, so, so you can see it here, I'm trying to get it to come, but it isn't, right? So I'm gonna, okay, and it did, it came, it, came all the way up to the bolt. So now I can go ahead and take the bolt out like that. And then it slides right off, okay? So now you're just gonna leave all this alone. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the table. We'll start transferring everything from this steering wheel over to the new one. We've got the two steering wheels sitting right here next to each other. And we're gonna start taking some stuff off of this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the trim here off. This is a 20 torque screw. We're gonna set these off to the side here. Set them down kind of in, in order so we get to put them back in the exact same way. Even though the screws are the same, we're gonna try to keep them the same. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the paddle shift screws here. Okay, that one just kind of fell down in there, so we'll, we'll get it in a minute. All right, and then we're going to take this off like so, and then we'll turn it over, and you'll be able to, it will reveal the lock here. Now, these little guys, they have a little safety lock in them, and you can press in right here on the gray and kind of force that. You can use a screwdriver here. You can force that little safety tab up and out of the way. So then you can grab it with your fingernail or your screwdriver and you pull that out like so. Then these plugs are really, really tight. There is a little button that you press right here to release the clip, um, but it doesn't want to ever come out. So if you press and hold that with your finger and then you get down in here with your, your clip or your, your, uh, your hook, you'll be able to slide it out, okay? Just like that. And set that one off to the side. I'm gonna do the exact same thing over on this side. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll pull that over here. Get that one. Then it pulls up and out. Then we can take our, our screwdriver here and we can push that safety tab forward. Get it to come out like so. Okay. Then we can take our hook and as we're pressing down, we can get down here where the plug is at and it'll come right out. Okay, so we've got our Torx here. We're going to take loose. This again, another 20. We're going to take this loose. Pull that one off. And we'll pull this one over here off. Now this one is a little bit harder. And so I'm going to show you, we've got a, um, it's a long Torx. You can see that right there. And we're going to go ahead and we'll be able to put that right down in this one. And get that little guy free. So then after we've got these two and this one here, we're going to flip this back over. And we're going to take these screws right here. We've got this one right here and right here. We're going to pull those out. Set that over there. Set this one over here. So now we've got our 210 torques right here that we've got to pull out. like so and then we can set that little guy just off to the side here so once we've got our our tens out of here we should be able to go ahead and we can see these two clips in here those are clipped into the back of the cover so we're just going to be able to take, reach in there with our fingers we'll be able to pop these out of those little clips okay it's like so Reach down in there. These are in there pretty tight, guys, so just be aware. There we go. And now we can start to pull the bottom or this bottom piece or the trim of the, steer, of the steering wheel off. This one is a little stuck here. It's just the angle that it's in. There we go. All right. So now at that point, we should be pretty much good to go here. We've got one little wire tie that's in there holding that. We're gonna snip that little guy right there. Okay, so now that is believe is free and clear. I don't think there's anything else holding that. And maybe one more wire tie right there. Okay. There's that. So I think we're good now. Okay. So we'll flip it over and we should be able to take the cover off. We're going to take our little red tabs here. We're just going to get this free so getting some of the stuff transferred off of the off of here and you pull the tab, red tab out you press down right here like that and that'll separate this one is the same way pull that tab out press in right here right let's see if I can do that with my finger right there at that tab let's see if I can point to it right there this one right there okay and then it separates. Now you can take this this little guy off of there. And set that off to the side. All right. So now what we've got is we're going to go ahead and we can take our our other screws here that hold the you can see on both sides. We can take these little guys free, and those are our twenty. So we're going to go back to our twenties. We'll take those free. And that's the 
remaining screws that hold the front control system the face plate onto the steering wheel okay so we'll get those going all right so now the control system should come off there we go just like that now we are basically we're done with this steering wheel here We'll set this off to the side. Okay, so now we're going to turn around and we're going to kind of reverse this order. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put, get our wires up here like so. We'll get this seated. Make sure that everything's in there the way it's supposed to be. Okay, make sure it's sitting in place. Making sure you don't pinch any wires. And you get that in there, just like so. Okay, so that's what it looks like there. All right, now what we can do is we can go ahead and put our steering wheel back down. And we can go ahead and reverse what we just did. So I'm holding the control panel there up a little bit with my fingers. And I'm gonna start my screws. Same thing over here. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll tighten them up. Get this one to start. But you want to try to get these started with your fingers first. There you go. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll tighten these down. Same thing over here. I keep checking the camera here. I don't think I'm blocking a guy's view. Okay. And all right. So now we've got our control system or our panel up back on the steering wheel it's transferred so now literally all we're doing is we're just going to start transferring all the screws back into the steering wheel next we're going to go ahead and put these screws into here into our trim that okay so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our our bottom piece on we're going to make sure that all of our wires are tucked down in there okay just like that down and through we want to make sure that our paddle control plugs are coming through the hole like so okay and then you're just going to press this down okay it's like so okay and then we're going to flip this back over then at that point, we can take our, if you remember our little trim here, we can take that little trim and we can go ahead and we can put this back in place. Okay, so that little guy goes right here. Okay, and these are the ones with the, the 10 uh, torques. Okay, so we're going to be able to do that. You gotta get that wire pinched in there just right. You can see right there, you can see that one there, it's not wanting to go in just right. There we go, we got it. We are down here, we've got our, we've got our plug, and it's the female side of this plug here, and it's got a red wire and it has a black wire. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna just cut it and then, and then strip it back and try, try to reattach it. I'm literally just going to take the size of my razor knife and I'm just going to kind of skin the wire a little bit, okay? Just skinning the shielding off of the wire, okay? Until I expose the, the power wire or the actual copper underneath there, okay? Just like so. So we're gonna get that completely trimmed out 
so I can get to the copper and I think you can start to see that that we're getting that done okay all right so now that I've got that skin back what I can do is I can take my red wire and I'm not going to need this connector on here anymore okay so we're just going to clip that connector off okay and then you can use a pair of strippers this is pretty thin wire so you should be able to strip it with your fingernail just like so okay and then what you're going to do is you're literally going to wrap it Let's see if I can get my glasses here so I can see okay and I'm going to wrap it around this the red wire okay and I'm going to basically wrap it and then I'm going to twist it just like so hopefully you can see it I'll show it show it to you as it's get after it gets done here but you can see here what I did is it literally is just the copper copper to copper and I'm twisting it now I'm going to I'm going to go take this out to my soldering station and I'm going to solder these now you don't have to do that if you don't want to this this twisting of this and taping it will probably be more than enough okay um, be more you know it's not drawing a lot of juice very little but you can see right there that that's let me see if I can bring that up there but you can see that it's just twisted together right there now like I said I'm gonna put some solder on it and then I'll put some tape on it but I'm gonna do the same thing on the black wire okay I'll just skin it back so if you have a soldering gun and you don't want to worry about ever having a problem with the connection you, you know then great just solder it but they've uh, you know, basically it's really not a big issue you just want to make sure those of you that haven't done a lot of electric electrical stuff I, you probably won't be doing this anyhow but um, you just don't want to you want to make sure that these two wires get get retaped um, where the black and the red do not touch okay otherwise we're blowing fuses and we're doing stuff to the car that we don't want to do okay all right so just about got that done a little bit of plastic still on that on that wire but we're almost there there we go okay just like that then we're going to take and use our black wire we're going to cut this end off okay and then we'll strip it back just like so okay Now, if these wires touch right now, it's not going to hurt anything because there's no, no power hooked to anything. But we want to make sure that we don't have anything touching before we hook it up to the car. So all I'm doing here, like I said, I'm just twisting these, twisting these wires together. See if we can get this a little bit better. And it is a tight squeeze, so it is going to take a little bit of finesse to, to get this done. Um, I was trying uh, off camera to be able to figure out a way you could kind of skin these wires before you put all this together but it all needs to go together at this point not not beforehand so um, you might as well just endure it instead of trying to confuse yourself and do something out of order Okay, so now you can see there we've got our black wire to black, our red wire to red, and then we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to solder it. So I think what I'm going to do, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll bring my solder station here to the camera and I'll show you what I do and then we'll go from there, okay? Alright guys, so I'm about to go ahead and solder these connections, but 
if you don't have a soldering gun, you don't want to deal with it, you can just take, right now, you could just go ahead and get some black tape, some electrical tape, and you can just tape these connections off separately. Okay, I'm going to use the tape afterward. I'm just going to go ahead and solder the connection too. So I've got my soldering gun here. I'm going to see if I can get my hands in here without my head so you guys can see. I test my soldering. Yep, there it goes. And it doesn't take a lot. You're just going to put a little bit of solder on that connection. There we go. That one looks good. Do the same thing over here. Okay. And that's done. Let me shut my soldering gun off. So I'm going to let that cool just for a second. I'm going to go ahead and get a little piece of tape here. Okay, and you don't need a lot. Maybe so much, right, like that. But you can see right there, I've twisted that. That looks pretty good, okay? All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the black one. Okay. Get this a little bit better here. Let's see, we'll just go this way here. Okay. Start at a little bit of an angle. And then start walking it down. There we go. Almost got it. Now, like I was saying, guys, this is everything about this installation is just finesse. This is not hard work. You have to have a few tools. Yeah, basically a torque set and just a little bit of patience. Okay. Okay. You see right there, we've got those connections done. Take a look at that. Let's see if I can get it up to it. Let's see, there you go. So you can see that. Okay, so that's good. So now what you can do is you can turn, if you really want to do this, do this up, just take a little more tape. And now you can tape this connection. Just tape the whole thing. That'll make it look a lot nicer. Okay. And then at that point, we're going to plug this little guy in. Okay. So we'll snap it together. We'll flip the red latch. And now we're going to tuck that down in here where it belongs. And it's got a little clip down there that's pretty, pretty tight, actually. I'll show you what I'm talking about when I get my hands out of the way. There we go. So there's a little clip that's right here that holds this connection, okay? And it just sits down in there so it keeps it all out of the way. So this way, nothing is rubbing against the airbag when we go to do this. Because see, this wire is going to be here and these wires are going to go to the airbag. So everything's pretty much free and clear, okay? And these have no choice but to go right down in here, but there's no real no movement. And then you can also tuck them away. And if I can get my camera, you can tuck them away right there like that. And you can, you can see it's nice and clear. Okay. So our next step now is to go ahead and go back to the car and put the steering wheel back on and make the connections and we'll be good to go. We are back in the car. We've got our steering wheel with all of our goodies all transferred over. Everything's looking good. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to set this little guy in here. Now, 
um, you know, it will fit a certain cog. It's got a key in it, so it's not going to go in a different direction. Um, but there you go. You'll slide that in into place just like that. Okay. And then at that point, what you can do is you can also, um, and we can hold this up here like this, or we can go ahead and we can just plug it, plug it in and be done with it. Right? We don't have a battery hooked up or anything yet, so we're going to plug it in. And we want to ma make sure that we press the red safety tab to push and lock that the connector in place. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bolt, take our 50 torques here, and we're going to put this back in. Now, if you had a problem and you had to use an easy out and get your and get a new bolt and put it in, you would be putting your new one in instead of this one. But we got we got really lucky on this one. Um, like I said, the C8s they are not anywhere near what they were with the C7. So you're just going to go ahead and you're going to tighten this down. The other thing while I'm doing this, guys, is that if we would have just gotten a regular steering wheel, just, just the carbon fiber steering wheel, um, then uh, we wouldn't even be dealing with the electronics. We would have just taken the other one off and slid the new one, you know, transfer the buttons over and be done. No wiring, okay? So, but uh, otherwise the gist is exactly the same. Even if you got the one that just has like the little ring up here at the top and no, no, uh, no digital in here, the, trans the transforming and moving of everything over to the new steering wheel is exactly the same, okay? All right, so it's snugging up now. And again, if you've got somebody to hold the steering wheel for you, great. If not, you can, you can contortion yourself here to keep the steering wheel from moving. Let's see how I'm doing that. All right, there we go. All right, so that's nice and tight. Okay, and now we can go ahead and we can rehook up the airbag and get this thing going. All right, guys, we've got our airbag now. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna reverse what we did. We're gonna plug this little guy back in. Okay, so we're just gonna plug it back in. It's like so. Now don't forget that you took a little clip loose, your little safety clip, or right here that hopefully you saved it and it goes in right here okay so we want to get it in there it goes right in this little tab right here just like that okay all right so that one's done now putting these back together you've got two colors you've got the pink and you got the purple okay so not a big deal there. These just will snap back in place. And if I can turn this enough that you guys can see it, uh, you'll see that they just go, they just snap back in there. Like I told you, much easier to put in than it was to take them out. Okay, just like that. They're already safety locked. Okay, and at that point, this just sits in the hole. Okay, you want to make sure that we have no wires in the way, which we don't. Okay, yep, everything's good. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this to sit down in there. Yep, that feels good. Now we have our two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so if you see, if you can see in here, if I can get my head out of the way, Hopefully you can see it right there. That there is a there's you can see the hole where this where the screw has to go in. And now I'm doing this by feel, so hopefully I get this I get it in there. But um, it it shouldn't be very hard. There's not a lot of pressing and pushing and anything like that that you should do. If you're having all of that, then you're not getting something lined up right. Okay, but that's in there now. You can see that the horn is it's floating like it should and the screw just needs to be tightened up. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on my ratchet now. Sorry that this was really hard to see, guys. 
this part. But it's very self-explanatory. When you get in there, you'll be able to tell no problem that that's where it goes. Um, yeah, very, very self-explanatory. Then one thing I want to point out too is that you are you are tightening everything up right next to this screen. You want to be very careful that it would hit your fingers and not let the ratchet hit your hit your screen. That would really suck. Okay, so we got that. I'm gonna tighten this one up over on this side. tightening down just fine. And the only thing we have left here guys on the steering wheel itself is to put the trim pieces back on and then um, and then we have the little controller the, the Bluetooth the Bluetooth controller that plugs into the ODB2 port down down below and then we'll we'll tuck it behind the trim and no one will even be the wiser that it's there. All right, so now we have our two little trim pieces here. We're gonna put those little guys back in place. And if I get the right one. That one goes in there like so. Okay, so basically what's happening is this little ear, it's gonna go in, it's gonna lock in place, and this is gonna go be right up by the paddle. Okay, so we're doing that over here on this side too, just like that. All right, so now our paddles, all of our buttons are working. We got everything's nice and smooth. We know everything's working correctly. We just have to plug it in and we'll test it, okay? So the next thing we need to do is plug the ODB2 controller in and then we'll hook battery back up. Here's our ODB2 controller as well as the little wiring harness that comes with it, okay? Um, you are not going to need this little white wire right here that's connected. You can disconnect that. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off of there. It's just a, a, a push-in connector. You can get rid of that. And then you'll just wire tie this up or tape it up when we get done. But this little, the one gray connector plugs into the controller, just like so and then you're going to have an ODB2 plug-in and you also have another male so this way if you want you can plug other accessories in or you can plug your tester into this also now what I have found that in the with the C7 and the C8 that these can actually cause the testers to not you know your your meters to not read correctly because it's the tester is picking up the electronics from from the brain so if you are doing some uh, some troubleshooting with a scanner doing anything like that what I would highly recommend you do is unplug this from the car which will the steering wheel won't work while you're doing it but this way you get a constant true reading Okay, so, um, but that's what this is for, so you can do something in line, all right? And I've seen people do that where they've got other things like the vind window valets and things like that. They can still plug this in to the car and then plug the other, the other unit into here, okay? But like I said, if you're doing some scan work, you want to just unplug this and then let the scanner plug in direct, okay? All right, so... What I'm going to do, um, this literally, what happens is I pull the, um, the side trim panel up and I tuck this back behind there and then it's out of sight, out of mind. Um, it's going to be hard to really show you that, so um, I will put the camera over here and show it to you at a distance, but it's going to be kind of hard for you to see that. But what I am going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and plug this in and then I'm going to go ahead and hook up the battery. All right, we're just going to plug this into the ODB2 port. Okay, it's plugged in. Like I said, we're just going to leave this sitting right here for right this minute for testing purposes. And we may have to marry the steering wheel 
to the uh, to the controller. So we'll leave that out at first, and then we can tuck it away. That'll be the last thing that we do. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook the battery back up. I'm going to take my lift this up, take my towel off, go ahead and reconnect the battery. Cars get, you're probably going to hear some different clicking and different things happening on your car as it turns, it starts to power everything up. Don't worry about that. All right, yeah, we're snug. Now we're going to go ahead and we'll put all this back together once we know everything is working fine and we don't need to take the battery free again. Okay. All right, guys, we are in the car. We got ourselves all hooked up. The battery's hooked up. We've got our our controller plugged into the ODB2 port our steering wheel hooked back up so if everything goes the way it should go we should get these lights to come up here and sweep and light up as the car starts and we should get a blue light on our controller um, if for some reason something uh, if they are if the two systems aren't married or paired then we can go ahead and we can push the button on the back of the unit and press and hold that until we start seeing the information coming up on the screen so we're going to go ahead and we're going to give this a try and let's see what we get. tested fine so at that point it's just time to put the trim back in there and we're gonna go ahead and tuck this back in you want to make sure that this little guy goes underneath this part here okay and that will go in there and sit in place okay just like that okay and then there's some little little plastic tabs that they snap in place you'll hear them snap Okay, and we'll go over on the other side over here and we'll snap those. Just like that. And there we go. Now guys, you can also another little tidbit for you. We do sell these now, uh, these surround trims. Uh, in we can get them painted for you and have the uh, Word Corvette or Stingray or Z06 or whatever you may have uh, put up here on the trim. We can do them in carbon fiber, we can do them in the color of the car, we can do it a lot of different things. So if you're interested, let me know. Also check out our webpage um, and our, uh, also our, our YouTube channel on the main page and you can see the video that we did on that with the infotainment system. If you go through that whole thing, you can really doll this up. Okay, so the only thing we have left here is just these trim pieces here. We'll tuck those in here and they just have snaps. You'll pull them, they just snap in place. And we'll go over to the other side right here. And they just tuck around. Okay, there we go. 
and that is all there is to it. And we'll go ahead and we'll put the infotainment system back in afterward, but you, you've got it here. I'm going to go ahead and set my cat, his cap right here, put that right back in place, and we're good. Guys, let me show you something here, what I did. Now you can see as the ODB2 connector actually plugs into the car, you have this other little one like I was showing you in the beginning. And like I said, I never use it. So I tucked mine up like this with black tape, so the white's gonna plug in like that, so you're not gonna see it. And then this, I'm gonna route up along the side of the kick panel and, that I'm gonna remove. I'm gonna tuck it in, and then this will be behind the kick panel, okay? So let me just show you here. I know I'm kind of in the way, but let me, let me show you. So you can pull right here where this seam is, and hopefully you guys can see that. Um, you can just lift up with your hands, this will pop this, this trim up and out of the way. I'm going to try to get out of the way this time and let you guys look and see. I'm going to try to move the camera right over here, but you can see it's this piece right here. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. So this piece is what I removed, and then I tucked the wire up in there. You can see that right there? Okay and it is tucked out of the way. And you just, I mean, you do have to be a little careful, but you know, you just, it, it's, it's out of the way and you shouldn't have any problems with that, okay? So that's all there is to it. And that is how you install one of these. So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. And when it comes time that you wanna do a digital carbon fiber or just a carbon fiber steering wheel, you'll know exactly where to go. I'm going to put all of that right here up on the screen. Go to ExtremeOnlineStore.com or you can reach out to me at CorvetteChannel.net and we can get you guys set up. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to put all that information here on the screen. And um, the way things happen, I've had a lot of people asking me questions about the, we've done a lot of discount codes over the course of the years uh, for Extreme Online. And um, what basically what happens is that they shut those codes off um, because they wanted to help promote me now. Um, I've become a dealer for Extreme Online. And so you can come to me and on a lot of the parts that they have, I can get you a discount. So just reach out to me. I'm gonna put all of my information right here on the screen. So if you find something either on CorvetteChannel.net or on ExtremeOnlineStore.com, you just reach out to me, let me know what you're looking for and I'll see if I can make get you a deal on them, okay? So, um, but anyway, take a look at this beautiful steering wheel. Doesn't this look great? It, it just, it feels wonderful in your hand and it just adds that little bit extra. You know, people don't even realize what you have until they're standing at your door and this thing lights up and all of a sudden they're like, wow, that's cool. So it's a major wow factor, but it really does, it does really well, it looks really good. And um, I think you will definitely enjoy it and appreciate one of these for yourself. That we also do these for the C7 and uh, we'll be doing a video on those also. So um, just stay tuned, okay? So we're gonna have those um, as a matter of fact, we did we did one on a C7, and we also did one on a C8 now. And um, I've had one in mind in both my C7 and C8 for for a while now, and uh, I love them. And so now uh, Extreme now is carrying them all the time, and um, so this way they'll be able to get you guys set up. Okay, so they're they're great quality units. Uh, these just are awesome. I, I can't imagine. I just I uh, just ordered one of these um, for uh, I had I have one for the C7. I've got one for the C8 now, and now I'm trying to see if I can get a one for my wife's CT5V. Um, so I'm uh, hopefully that Extreme will will carry one of those here soon. So anyway, uh, guys, I just want to thank you guys all for watching. Um, if, uh, if there was any questions that I left out, which I don't think I did, uh, I kind of went through it, I think, pretty well and pretty closed up. But if there's a question that you have, you know, feel free to reach out to me and ask questions, make comments on the, uh, on the video itself, and we'll see if we can try to get you guys going or email me. That's fine. You guys have all my information. I'm going to put it all right here on the screen again. But... Um, and if you guys are in the area and you want me to do these, 
not a problem. I've done a bunch of them. Okay. Uh, sometimes when you're filming, it looks a little awkward. Um, it's only because you are trying to hold your hands in a certain way that the camera will catch it. And, you know, so I've done a bunch of these. So it's not like this was my first one. It's just that there's just so many uh, angles that you're trying to make sure you guys can see that makes it look a lot harder than it is to install it. But we can do them, not a problem. So if you don't want to tackle this yourself, but you want to get one, just feel free to reach out to me and we'll get you going, okay? So guys, I just want to thank you all again for watching. Those of you that have already subscribed, thank you guys, I appreciate it. Uh, those of you that are watching and maybe it's the first time or you guys have been watching for a while and you've never subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell. Um, it would just really help. I've said this a million times, but it does and it makes it so all these other companies, they start coming to me to try to promote their product and some stuff makes it through and some stuff doesn't, but it makes it so I'm not having to go ask companies to, hey, send me something so I can do the work, okay? It's, it's they're sending to me and going, hey, would you be interested in doing this and showing your, your customers and your viewers? And uh, some stuff, like I said, some stuff I just look at it and go, nope, I'm not doing it. Some stuff, they send it to me, and then I go, no, nope, not going to even talk about it. And then there's times that there's just something really, really cool. And there's something that's coming up here soon that we'll be doing, and uh, it's for the front of a C8. And it, uh, it, those of you that want a Z06 but really, you know, can't, either I can't afford it or can't justify spending the money for it, um, you're going to be able to get that Z06 look. So, um, so stay tuned. Okay, we're going to be doing a bunch more stuff, and uh, we've got some C5 stuff coming. I know it's coming down the pipe, so um, we'll be able to do some stuff there too. So anyway, guys, uh, just thank you guys all for watching today, and we'll talk to you later, okay?